Hey everyone, I'm here at the Deerfield, Colorado ghost town. This is someone's dream. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kenny. I like to do fun, new and novel things and I enjoy doing it and I love sharing it with you. So let's go. In 1910, O.T. Jackson, he had a dream. He wanted to create a community for black agriculturists. He wanted to create a community for black people to live and thrive. He was already a successful businessman. Uh, he owned an ice cream parlor in Boulder. Just two years before that, he got a governor elected. He uh, started working for the gov he started working for the governor's office as a messenger, whatever that means. And uh, you know he did that for a while. And he went to the governor. He was like, "Look, I have this idea that we want to get some. I want to. I want to make some land for black people. It'll be a place where we can thrive, where we can do our own thing, where we can work and earn our own money. There's nothing going on with that land anyway. So you know what's up. So." He agreed, and they made it happen. In 1910, he gets the land. There's nobody there, it's just him. But he puts the word out about what he has, what he has in store. See, he'd read Booker T's Washington, his autobiography, where he is a proponent of black communities getting off on their own and uh, you know sustaining themselves if, you know just to remind you uh, things were pretty tough for black people in 1910 to say the least there was a lot of opportunity as far as OT Jackson was concerned so he got that land and it was just him and his wife Minerva look at that Minerva was the goddess of wisdom and knowledge in Roman mythology, by the way. I like that name. Anyway, she was the mayor, mayor of the town. And from 2010, excuse me, from 2000, excuse me, from 1910 to 1921, uh, they gained, it went from zero to three, two to 300 residents. By that time, they had a restaurant, a gas station, two churches, and uh, when's the last time you got two, three hundred people to do anything? I mean, he got these people to move from all these cities, Kansas City, Denver, Minneapolis, all the way here. Minnesota from here, that's a long, that's a long haul. So you're willing to take a risk because this dude told you, hey, this is, this is our dream. Let's make it happen. So, uh, you know, I respect that. That's some kind of old school stove right there. This was the restaurant, so that was where they cooked. I mean, you only have 200 residents here, 300 residents. Not everybody's at the at this place, so you don't need a whole lot. That's just a normal stove. So just imagine, you know, whatever cooked back here making something delicious. You know, sitting back here sweating, wiping his or her brow with a towel and just, you know, cooking. Hand the plate off, go through this little doorway. I don't know if you can see it. Take it to the customer. Why was this land chosen to grow crops? We'll take a look at this. As you can see, there's not much going on around here but dirt and soil. And if you work that right, you can grow things in it. Now all these houses weren't here at that time, so all you all they saw was land and potential. And that's why OT Jackson chose it. Unfortunately, at first, it was hard. They had hard times. They had they had no water sources. All the water rights were already signed away. They had to go about a mile to a river uh, to get water and bring it back. But they worked their asses off. He took it from when when people started first settling here. They were living in tents. Some were living in holes and hills, and and some of them almost died during the winter. They didn't have very much. And it was hard at first. They, they built something from nothing. Unfortunately, 
in 1921, a series of disasters began, which included the crash in the price of commodities like crops. And that's what they specialized in is crops. An old mattress or old frame, I should say. I don't know how stable this place is. Leftovers from the past were probably just laying around. They don't look very comfortable, by the way. But you, everybody had a bag back back then. Maybe not. Somebody wanted to let us know they were here. Now check this out. Look what I just noticed. I don't know if you can notice, but look at the distance between the floor and the ceiling. Like the edge of the ceiling. It feels like you would have to duck. I mean, maybe they built this for somebody who was smaller, maybe, you know, I'm not sure. That's wooden roof. I just can't get over how small everything is. And there's just these little steps here. So whoever owned this restaurant also lived here. Uh, let's see if I can stretch through. I'm not going in here. Got some insulation. Mind you, people lived here until the 70s, so I don't know what technology is relevant to what era, but from the 20s to the 70s, the Great Depression came and it really, uh, really hurt their success even more. At that point, uh, everybody who, many people who settled here just started to leave. You know, it was just too hard. I mean, you know, we kind of have it good nowadays um, compared to them because, you know, there's so many resources out to help us where them, you know, at that time, like you're sacrificing everything you have. All your time, effort, your lives, the years of your life, you know, the welfare of your family, just to take a stake a claim in something that you're not certain about. According to the map I have, this is the diner. So this is the diner or restaurant. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're at this peak with 700 people. I can't imagine everybody be at the restaurant at once. It's a small population. Um, it looks more like a house, but it's pretty, the ceiling is not very far from the floor, so it just doesn't look like it's like it would be. But I see a lot of, um, like if you see up here, a lot of light uh, connections. So that makes sense. I don't know if that'd be in a house in the 1920s. Now I think this is, uh, they modernized this because the last person left in the mid 70s. So um, I think there was just pretty much one person living there at that time. By 1940, the population was 12. At, at that time, O.T. Jackson really tried to uh, get, tried to revive it. He put his whole life into it. He, that's was, that was his whole identity. Sometimes it's hard to let go of dreams. He tried to recruit other uh, younger men to, to get fired up, but he really didn't have any takers. Nobody was really interested in it. He tried to sell it, but nobody wanted to buy it. So, uh, you know, he, he died with his dream sort of in ashes. And that's the way it goes sometimes. But he died in 1948 and that was that. You get a guy like O.T. Jackson, who just wanted to create something, uh, you know, for people to be happy and to thrive and to, uh, you know, to make their own way without, without uh, fear or, or without worrying about being persecuted. To me, where he did get, was significant. So this here was the gas station. And I can't quite tell where the pumps were, but I, I assume they were back here somewhere. It's just, you know, interesting to be in a place that was someone's everything at once. You know, you, you lived, you died, you ate, you, you know, used the bathroom, you know, you loved, you were angry, you were sad. And like now, all those feelings and all those, uh, all those lives 
uh, have moved on and this is what's left. I mean, just think of the millions of people who drive down this road every decade and don't even pay attention to what this is. Sometimes it takes looking at the things that other people don't look at to give you perspective in life. So luckily I'm not the only one who wanted to notice this and thought it was important to remember. Uh, now, historical state historical fund is trying to preserve this and they're funded by uh, gaming, so gambling and casinos and things like that. And also the also the Black American West Museum is uh, working to preserve this. So sometimes people will come up and they'll do some work. Uh, as you can see, there's plexiglass on this one here. And uh, they've done some work and they're trying to preserve it. And it seems like they're doing a decent job. I don't know what this originally looked like, but I know this was uh, O.T. Jackson's house. So he had to, you know, this was the, the mansion, I guess, of the town. That's it for Deerfield. If you learned something, if this was interesting and you want to support me, like the video and subscribe. Um, I'll be coming out with more interesting things, hopefully. Share this on your social media if you think this is a story worth hearing. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.